Yo, what's up guys? It is Fano here once again. Today I will be running you through a song of mine that was released on Metalheads and check out various stuff relating to it. I will be running you through the song pretty much section by section and I will talk about some of the elements that come in and some of the processing some of the stuff that happens, why it happens. So basically looking at song structure, some of the choices relating to what happens to the song and some of the some of the samples and stuff, some of the processing. Once that is done, after that I will talk a little bit about a, a small story relating to how the song happened. And also I will be talking about what I think makes for a good metalhead song, which kind of is it is happening in the song so i I'm, i don't want to say there's a formula to music because screw that but uh it is something that i think about so without further ado i will just push on and let's get this show on the road i will i won't play the whole song here because you can listen to that for example on metalheads bandcamp or on spotify or whatever suits you best so, but I will quickly play some of the parts here and see how this goes. Let's do it. So the song starts like this. So you only get this like a, like a, I like to set a certain mood. If you know my music, my bass music, drum and bass, it's usually kind of moody, sort of melancholic, kind of kind of depressing. Hey, I'm from Finland. So, but I think that's like, um, I just like to start usually kind of, kind of mysterious and stuff sometimes, or the overall vibe usually leans that way. I did a, I just, it's just a pad or like a string pad type of thing that I did with my virus. That is Axis Virus C uh, classic virtual analog synth. I don't know if it's any better than today's soft synths in terms of technical specs, but it's a classic. It sounds good, very good on basses and um, pads and that sort of thing. So this was done with that. It's a, it's like a, this is slowly opening. It's um. So it slowly opens and get the filter dips down back and it's like I always think in music you don't want to play your all the cards at the same time like you want to introduce some elements little by little so that's there's that it's like a very minimal very minimal start and there's some other sort of like layers of noise it, this is kind of quiet I'm only using the Ableton Live echo for that because it has a noise feature and it seems that I've done some some morphing for it. So the noise noise profile is morphing. Let's take a listen. It is pretty quiet, but still. It is subtle. I love it, but it, I, I, sometimes I, or most of the time, I'm kind of dreading like a very silent background. So I like to add some noise and stuff. Here is another quiet thing. <laughs> it's the sound of rain that I was recording when I was in a tent many years ago, I think. So I'm using this Zoom recording device that I just capture whatever sounds that I come like come across. And I like to do, in a lot of my music, I've used sounds of rain and a little noise on the backgrounds, sort of like a filler that you don't necessarily recognize that it's there but if you flicked it off you would be like okay yeah it lost lost a bit of like some sort of background vibe so that's for the intro it's just uh, like a moody and scary so then we get to the main element of the song which is the break and um i think because i i cannot fully remember everything that i did relating to the song but based on the file name i guess i've used this tal sampler for it first and then i bounced it to audio if you don't know tal sampler is actually a super nice 
a super nice sampler that um, it offers some nice character options. I won't get into it now, but I just want to let you know, like if you're looking for a sampler that's fairly simple to use, offer some layering, filtering, and also this different, well, what DAC type means is uh, digital to analog conversion. So it emulates some of the characteristics of some old samplers. You got Akai S1000 and some of the emus and some of the hiss, there's literally hiss and bit rate, uh, no, sorry, bit depth and uh, saturation and jitter and that stuff. So you can easily add a bit of dirt on it. So I probably added a little bit of dirt on this on these drums and then I bounced it to audio. I, I'm, I, I, sometimes I suck at committing, like I wanna keep my doors open so I can go back to something and edit it. But sometimes it just makes you edit things forever. And it, it, sometimes it's just good to go ahead and sort of commit because in, in the digital world, it's so easy to, you know, just keep editing th things forever. So that's probably the reason why I bounced this to audio. So basically these 16 bars, it's just, it's repeats the same thing in the beginning. And then you get a little bit of like a small vocal throw here. I always think of electronic music as happening in 16 bar sections. That is what I teach to my students like probably at least 90% of all electronic music happens in 16 bar sections. And what I mean by this, you can actually see it here. Like this is why I wanted to sort of introduce the first section to you. Like if you are new to electronic music production, pay attention to bars and sections and how long they are. In electronic music, most electronic music things happen in 16 bar sections. So my intro, without any beats or hi-hats or something, it was 16 bars. And then the next 16 bars, a new element is introduced, like the beat comes in. And then at the end of that 16 bar section, I get this vocal throw. And then a, the, another 16 bar section happens. So at the end of this second section, I, you get this little vocal and then the next section begins. So one thing that happens here, obviously, is bass. I don't, I don't usually go super long in the song without bass. I've, I have gone longer than this, but I, I just, you know, well, bass is there. <laughs> it's not, I don't have to explain that it's bass music. But do you want to pro progress with your song to keep the listener's interest up? So this little vocal that comes in sort of contributes to the, uh, to the vibe. <laughs> Just keeping up this otherworldly vibe. One sort of minimal change in the drums is this, like I'm starting very sparse, like very, very minimal, kind of low energy here. Here, there's a very small hi-hat added. So it's a, like a very minor addition to it. And this one thing that I always say to my students, or, or sometimes when I hear some songs by music makers that haven't been making music very long, they often play all the cards at once. Like they start the drum loop and it's full steam ahead, or, or they're using all the elements from the very beginning. And I'm always trying to teach like, build it gradually, build it slowly. like. If I solo this, you get my point. Like I start very like low energy. It's kind of great for intro because you don't go, you don't want to go all out 
full-on hammering in the beginning. Then there's a very minor hi-hat here. Almost can't be heard. Here. So if I compare these to this and this section here, So you see that, or you hear that it's, I'm getting busier with the drums, like I'm, I'm increasing energy. I'm sort of, I'm going towards the drop here in a way. I will soon talk to you about this anti-drop that I sometimes do. But uh, so here in the section, let's see where it goes he from here. I'll just let it play from here. <laughs> I've written anti-drop here so what i mean is like it's almost you could it, you the vocals come in and and the filter is open and stuff so you could almost think that okay it's about to drop but it doesn't but <laughs> sorry for the cpu jumps it's a bit heavy to film all this and all the plugins that are going on but anyways so it's a bit of an anti-drop you get this like a like a, a very common element that is very efficient still no matter how old and cliche and classic it is it's like a, a, a symbol or like a crash that has been reversed that fades in so i'm using that here and it would make you think that okay it's about to drop but it doesn't And maybe confusingly enough, the beat goes back to being this sparse, not so busy. But then again, I'm introducing a new element here, which is the claps. It just clap samples on um, in Ableton Live Sampler. Nothing special. Just uh, four different claps. I've used those claps for so many years. <laughs> it's insane. I always say I, there's a few elements in my music that I always use. Even in this song, there's some things, and I've said to myself every now and then, like the first, the, like whenever somebody kind of comes to me and says that, "Yo, you you've done that so much, I'm gonna quit doing that," and the clap thing. I've been using those for like, I don't know, 15 years and not every time, not like super heavily, but they've been there so many times. Um, also, okay, let's talk about the bass a little bit. It is fairly simple. There will be a change happening to the bass. It's, it's just a bass done with serum. <laughs> Fairly unexciting filtered bass. You will soon hear where it goes from here. It gets pretty rowdy. I'm a sucker for 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 this like you know this this sine wave. Ooh, ooh, like a pitch falls down. It's just it will always sound good. It it will always be efficient. Sort of non intrusive. It doesn't ask for much attention, but it's very efficient. It's there. It gives the track the energy. But uh, I will show you what will happen then so another thing here is uh i think i heard it somewhere here this one thing i'm gonna sh um recommend to you a great uh, what's that word spring reverb if you let's listen to this part here you will hear a mild reverb throw and the CPU stutter is there, I'm so sorry. Let me make it heavier so you will hear. You will hear it. So 
I often do these little small things at the end of 16 bar sections and I just love Ableton Live for that like how easy it is to do like you click on this send amount and then it, it, it's shown to you like if I clicked on another send which would be uh, another reverb here I just get it I'm seeing that now so I could do this I could do reverb throw here I want to see another reverb send and it's there so even when I do songs with hardware I just love when I get to this stage like I get to do the little automation here and there it's just I, I just love it but on this one good spirit reverb it's a spring reverb I just recommend this it is it, it is kind of free because you get the free demo which asks you to pay for it but it, it'll work forever I highly recommend it it's literally the springiest sounding reverb I've ever heard let's listen to this in isolation here <laughs> it sounds so good so I just um, a, a little thing before moving on to the next section here so that's that Sorry, things were in solo. Okay, so we are finally off. It kind of, it finally dropped. So what happens here, I'm, I'm stripping away some of the elements. Um, let me just close the, uh, okay, so I am, I'm dropping some of the elements, like all the intro elements are just, they go away and the beat gets kind of busier and the bass gets rowdier. So you increase, or I, I increase energy here. So far I have been filtering the bass, so you will see that this filter just switches off as it drops. And you should definitely hear like a tension release here. Like you have to towards this, like a, where this six, 16 bar section ends, there's a little added like energy burst in a way. And then it kind of just drops and starts happening. In electronic music, you're going to need that. Well, all, you all know what a drop is and what it's good for. Let's listen to this again from here let's also listen to what happens to drums here I have no idea how I did that effect I did it before I bounced it to audio. So this used to be MIDI and I had some effects and stuff, but then I felt like I need to commit, I need to go ahead. I don't do it very often. I kind of now, I kind of wish I saw it, but it's probably some reverb. Or actually it's probably like a parallel distortion that leaves the transients there. or probably parallel distortion or parallel compression. I will be talking about those actually in videos on my Patreon channel. So give me a follow there. So let's push ahead. Then 
the vocal is still there. Like I, I'm still kind of the vocal that started somewhere in halfway to the intro. It's it's there. It's still there. It, I kind of carried on for a little while and then I just drop it. One thing you have to pay attention to when making electronic music these days is because it's so easy to just duplicate. And sometimes I have to go back and delete things. Like if they get get too loopy, I just find myself here and I'm like, you you don't always hear it immediately. But when you're kind of like half done with your song, pay attention to some of the elements. Like, do they get too loopy? Like, is there too much repetition? So I often, obviously, I've the way that I work, I usually just do like highlight and duplicate the whole section, and then I just go on and do little edits. Sometimes I do like the busiest section of the song, which it's probably how th this song happened. I I may do it here on the arrangement or on I've probably done it on session. I won't go super deep into it, but I sometimes I on Ableton Live I do this one scene that's like mega busy and has all the elements of the song and my analogy for that is like uh, I don't try to bake the cake which is write the song before I have all the ingre ingredients on the table which is all the elements of the song that are needed to make it interesting enough so I uh, often do like this one scene that is massively busy like too busy too many elements at the same time but then I know that I will have all the elements that I will need for the song and then I may record like the busiest section of the song here and then I just kind of thin it out or like build towards it from the intro so let's say the busiest section is here then I take some elements maybe the drums move them here onto the intro and make it like more busy, less busy and then I just build the song towards this section and slowly build and introduce new elements that is a very common workflow to me. And the reason why I work that way is I've always said that making music is work to some extent, and often it's making it into a song that is work and when it may not be so fun anymore. So I'm trying to put the energy where it counts, which is working on the elements of the song, like working on the one loop and, you know, just putting a lot of elements there that really fit you can do it on arrangement as well like there's no reason why it couldn't be done here but i usually like session because i won't get into it now but it's so easy to drag and drop elements here and i do a lot of like totally random browsing i've been sampling sounds for uh, as long as i've been making music which is 30 years so I just randomly sometimes browse sounds and drop them here on session and I can easily click and just play and loop and, you know, try the different things. And it's more difficult here because you're kind of tied to this linear uh, backbone and you always kind of stuck with that. But with session, you can just throw things here and get really messy and then create this one Say, um, scene about the elements that are currently looping, like super busy looping, then just create one scene out of that. And then just that is your like the main bulk of the song. And then you build towards that or away from that, depending on how you work. But let's get back to the song. And um, where were we? Probably here. Okay, so one... So, so it drops here. By the way, it's, it takes nearly two minutes to for the song to drop. If you said that the, you know, the intro is too long, I wouldn't be saying that you're wrong. But here, if you listen to the song, I, I think it kind of works. I cannot speak for my own music, obviously, but uh, I think it kind of works. And then it, when it finally drops, it's I guess it's fairly efficient, I hope. Let's check out the bass and some of the processing it's a fairly it's fairly um simple like i showed you it's a serum base but one thing that creates its character is this limiter or it's like a limiter plus clipper so if i let's just peer up to uh listen to a few bars of this So it's kind of rowdy, so I would say... So 
so the so, so the drum loop is very kind of gritty it's very sort of aggressive so i need i knew that i i'm going to need a bass with it that's kind of e equally gritty so one thing that actually changes the character of the bass is this limiter let me just flick it off let me solo the track so i'll flick it off I often start with basses like this, and then I will do a video about what this limiter can do, but I won't get super deep into it now. But technically, I'm, where the character comes from is I'm limiting and clipping it. Like you have a limiter section. It's very brutal limiting here. There's no dynamic action happening at all, but I'm also clipping it. So I'm just distorting it very heavily. By the way, I want to do a video about filtering things before you actually distort them, but I didn't do it here. It's just full on distortion. And then a little bit of UAD API. Uh, okay, yeah, let's see. I had forgot about that. So I'm doing a little bit of automation here. So that's where the character or the, some of the automation comes from. So, so here I'm dipping out the mid-range so it, it's not completely static all the time so it, it changes a little bit I've added a little bit of sub and that's it so from a fairly tame bass to a bit of a gnarly one I'm using it seems I'm using the uh, Ableton Live multiband dynamics which is it's a three band compressor or no it's actually let's be more speci specific it's a three band dynamics tool it can do your classic compression, it can do gating, it can also do expansion. I think I've covered most of those, but I'll, I'll probably do a refresher on, on my Patreon because on my Patreon, I wanna have all the basics and more advanced stuff for people. But um, I'm just compressing the sub a little bit. So if without this, the sub would be louder. I often take a look at the amount of sub as well. Like I have a very good studio sound. But I still look at the sub a little bit. I've, I've written about this. I actually have on my Patreon. I have a tip about how loud your sub should be. So take a look at my Patreon. It's a um, post there that will get into the specific specifics of how loud the, sh the sub should roughly be. But um, so here the sub has got a little loud. Let me actually try and just, I'll just disable this. Well, the difference is not massive. But then again, I'm an audio nerd, so there's that. Let's move on. Let's go. I'll just play it from here and let's let's go. Okay, so the break stays kind of busy and um, I'm adding a little bit of hi-hat and shaker action here, so. And also a crash. So if you compare. So there's a, like a little layer of added percussive energy there. Also, I'm here, I'm adding a little bit of, like in my music, I've always been doing this sort of otherworldly kind of mysterious, depressing, <laughs> melancholic stuff. 
that's what I like to do. But as you see here already, like the song is kind of progressing, which is, I guess it's kind of typical, but then again, in electronic music, I hear a lot of stuff that literally just loops the same thing and I, I cannot stand it. So in my music, I want to keep it more lively. So I'm adding things, taking things out and soon it'll get more busy. But let's see. So one thing I've been doing for a few years now is like a, a bass switching what is what 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 was often done in older jungle was like a break switching which which means that you have a, a drums then for the for a certain amount of time a, another drum loop comes in and the main drum loop gets muted but uh, what i've been doing f now for some time is like bass switching it's, it's not super crazy here i've taken it way further with some other songs of mine but here so Actually, yeah, it started earlier, but I'll talk about it now. So here I have the main bass and then there's two other bass sounds. Let me actually solo these th these three. So what happens here on the main track is, um, let me find it. So whenever the other basses play, Let's take a look. When the first new bass plays, I'm just filtering, high pass filtering the main bass so the subs won't clash. You see here, whenever this new bass comes in, I think this is uh, part of my bass pack. I've, I'm actually there's if you subscribe to my patreon I've been putting out some bass sounds there's audio and serum presets presets so take them but anyways when this bass comes in actually this is from my first sample pack that is on my bandcamp sorry anyways when this bass plays I'm filtering this bass so the subs won't clash so there's that so I'm doing this bass switching To just keep things interesting. Sometimes I do very loopy stuff. I think like a loopy, very like a very loopy sort of minimal stuff is something that I've always been struggling with. So I, I tend to get kind of kind of busy with the elements. But this is definitely my thing these days, like adding bass sounds and getting kind of busy with different bass sounds. This bass sound here is done by a friend of mine, Aki Halbanemi who, who uh, used to release drum and bass DAC. He put a EP out on my label Lightless many years ago. It's so dope. Check it out. This is by him. I'll be using it a lot. <laughs> Sometimes you get a good element and you just want to use it a lot, man. But here, so uh, let's see if there's anything others, any other specific stuff. No. So basically, new elements come in, bass switching happens. There's no nothing. These are the samples. I've, I've, let's see. Ooh. So yeah, I'm adding character to the bass. It's fairly sloppy here, but this I'm just using Ableton Live Saturator, adding a bit of drive, touching some of the main settings to get a bit of vibe for it. I just love distorting basses. It's just, I love it. That is the best thing in the world. Same thing for this guy. Let's see. Ooh, this is the original-ish. Dude, listen to that. And then, yeah, okay, I'm dynamically eating away some of the sub. Tokyo Don Nova, there's a free version of this. If you need a great dynamic EQ, this is your boy. Get it, Tokyo Dawn Labs Nova. This is a paid version with more features, but um, I'm technically what I'm doing here is when the I'm doing dynamic EQing in such a way that it's pushing the signal down. So basically, when you have a threshold here, when this frequency exceeds the threshold, it's being pushed down. So in a way, it's like frequency frequency specific compression. So 
I probably could have get the same result with um, static, normal EQ, but hey, I'm an audio nerd, so there's that. And sometimes I literally just love using different plugins, even if you have lots of plugins doing the same thing. I think it's almost like it's inspirational sometimes to try out different plugins because even if they're kind of samey, it, 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 sometimes the experimentation is what fuels creativity. I remember F FX Twin saying something like, it wasn't these words, but it, he, he said in an interview that if I wasn't learning new things, I wouldn't get anything done. And I really just kind of agree. Like sometimes you just get a new plugin, a bass sound, you just, you just get busy. You start and then sooner than you know, you will be building like a loop or a song around that idea. So like a variation with your tools, it's super nice. I'm like, if you are one, if you're a person who's using the same plugins all the time, that is fine. I use most like is the same toolbox for my mixing, mastering, production, most of the same plugins all the time. But sometimes it's nice to get a new one and just get, see how it works and it'll inspire you. I can almost guarantee it. forgot to flick that on. I'm also bringing the claps in. This also relates to it. It could have been like this. It's so easy to duplicate and copy. Whoops. But it's also it's you got to be tasteful. Sometimes the music becomes too repetitive. And I'm uh, I do that a lot, I admit, but at one stage of when I'm sort of done with my songs, I usually just like a, even just like a look like is there something that's repeating way too much. It, it's it's often a shaker, or like a, maybe a clap or like a additional additional hi hat. But you just gotta sort of try and distance yourself from it, and sometimes you get, catch it when you listen, and, and when you catch it and you're listening, you're like, oh my god, it's so annoying, then you delete it. So this is something I do, like I want to make sure that there's not something that loops too much. Obviously, you're gonna have basic elements like bass that is mostly doing the same thing, but you you get my point. So clap was added here, and it's good to have like like often say like don't play all the cards at the same time. It, even if you have a very useful element, it's sometimes it makes sense to have a section where it's like muted and then it comes back in because variation and sort of being able to create a song that is not super repetitive is actually challenging. So it's good to have these elements that you can sort of take out and and then bring back in because a challenge in music is, is making something that doesn't sound too repetitive to the listener. And sometimes it only takes like small addition and Variation, that's the word. So variation is important. Like we all hear so much music. It, it were easy to, it's so easy to just flick onto the next song when we get bored. So that's something that I really try to pay attention to. Hoping that listeners won't be flicking to the next song. Maybe, <laughs> maybe there's some people who will flick onto the next song here because the <laughs> intro is so long, but it's their, their loss. Let's push on. Where was I? Probably here now. So Okay, so, so let's see, I'll let it play for a while. A new fresh element is introduced. A guitar. You see that small changes sort of invigorate the vibe. So let's move, let's go back and move here. It's just, see what, when the guitar comes in, it starts to get a little more hopeful. <laughs> So 
So the only thing added here is the guitar and obviously it's other than that it's kind of looping but you have to be loopy enough <laughs> Another new element, another guitar. And vocals, like just a few vocals. I've always loved vocals in my bass music. There's no way around it. If you've been listening to my stuff, you know it. It's this nice added human element in sometimes so electronic sounding song. By the way, most of the electronic stuff that I like still has to sound kind of organic. That's one thing you've always, you have also noticed if you've been listening to my music. Like I don't do a whole lot of like really bleepy and like drum machine style. I it's just not something that I like so much. I've never liked it. It, it even the like the old uh, very electronic stuff is still very organic. Like where the where my musical my musical backbone was formed in the nineties early 90s i was listening to like really trashy euro techno kind of stuff that's something i don't miss but after that just i got into hip-hop early drum and bass and stuff like that cypress hill um good looking early metal heads all that sort of stuff um all the hip-hop back then was like so organic and it, it, it still kind of is but I'm, i never got into the more like a trappy stuff i'm more into the organic you know, like if if I had to point out one artist from drum and bass that has always been very organic and kind of hip hop, Danny Breaks, he nailed it. So organic elements to me, even in my very electronic music, it's very important. And that's here. That's why I hear I'm adding the guitars and the vocals. It get, it's getting kind of funky here, and I it, you kind of the beat hopefully makes sense in like a funky context. <laughs> Sorry for the CPU jumps. So here you see that I'm kind of just switching between the elements, not really adding a whole lot of new stuff. It's just going between the same elements, sustaining the energy, but also sustaining interest, hopefully. So here's another add, new added element, funky horn. <laughs> And once that ends, it's going back to the loopy guitar. And I, it is something about this looping funky guitar that for me just works. I mean, it, it's almost like it's so I don't I don't want to say I'm good. I didn't I didn't play the guitar. I'm being honest, but the guitar sounds so good that it's worth bringing back in once again. Same happened here with the claps. Once again, like they're there, they're there. They just go away. They come back. So I'm doing a little bit of just going between elements. Obviously, you can only do it for so long until the listener is going to hit the next button. And if they think the song sucks, they're going <laughs> to be hitting it anyways. But here it's just like going between a few elements. And then let's see what happens after that. <laughs> this anymore <laughs> so, so the song has been uh lasting for like four and a half minutes so i'm like relieved like hey i made it it's, it's usually when i reach like four four minutes four and a half i know that it will be like a full song so but here i'm just using this i'm going switching between the elements and i'm trying to be like i don't want to get make the listener too bored so I know that some a change will have to happen and it happens here like I wrote here like 
easy way out. I'm literally taking the easy way out of this section once more. I just can't stand to hear about this anymore. So it's like this can work sometimes, like a sudden change. Sometimes I fade things out gradually. Sometimes I just take out one element at a time or whatever works. But this, I haven't done it this very many times, actually, to be honest. But here, I think it works. It's just like, okay, well, it, just, it changes. And then it's back to another section. Yet another 16 bars, like it was 16 bars with the loopy guitar, 16 bars with the horn, 16 bars with the guitar, 16, nearly 16 bars with the horn, and then I just can't stand to hear about this anymore. And then oh, we're back to here. I forgot if I've done any arrangement changes on the break. Yeah, you might think that it's soon it'll be pretty played out because it's repeating the same. Obviously, I'm I'm doing small changes here. Like what I always do is like a duplicate the 16 bars and go here and here and make a little edits. I, I've done that in the MIDI. Cannot see it now, but but then again, it you don't always have to change everything all the time because there's things happening here in the musical parts. N the listener may not be paying that much attention to the drums so you're it's kind of fine that you're using the same drums like even if you went kind of crazy and different here it would be okay and it would be sound sounding nice but uh, it's not super necessary like some change is uh, keeping up the listeners interest it's always needed but here let's go back here and soon we're nearing the end and there's a uh, a little bit of a change coming up. I can't stand to hear about this anymore. Okay, around this part, you're probably gonna be like, "What's what is the guy gonna do next? Like, isn't it isn't it time to wrap it up?" And I just do a tempo change. I don't hear, I don't hear this a lot, to be honest. Could you switch this for me? This would be a nightmare for a DJ who hasn't, who's, let's say you're, you've bought the song and you haven't listened to this. I, I'll be honest, often before DJing some songs that I've got or downloaded or bought, I don't like, I, I, I buy it based on the vibe. Like I skip through, like I skim through the song and I'm like, yeah, that's dope. I don't always listen to the whole song. If a DJ was mixing here, I would be ruining it for him because the tempo change. But then again, you just kind of have to know your songs. But I wanted to do the tempo change here because it just felt good in so let's see i'm automating the tempo here in ableton live it's kind of easy to automate the song tempo so it's, it's just a brutal jump from 138 to 184 well technically it's like 92 because this is for me. i'm programming like half tempo <laughs> Well, you get my point. There's one thing about the bass that actually changes a little bit. Let's play it from here. There's some small nuances happening here and let's see what they are. It's like this bass starts vibrating a little more. There's a maybe Let's see here. 
so I'm actually introducing another oscillator yeah I'm pronouncing that right oscillator earlier I think on my Instagram I, I said oscillator I've been saying oscillator for years I am sorry thanks for the correction so many people oscillator you heard it from me oscillator 2 comes in see <laughs> Well, that there's actually another thing happening. Let's see here. Well, that's kind of minor, but um, so os oscillator. I was about to say oscillator. Damn, oscillator two is activated, and it adds to this sort of like a uh, wobbliness yeah there's nothing else but so oscillator 2 comes active and this is a thing there's another song by me called I'm struggling to think. It's on my EP on Slug Wife, it, where I do the same thing. Like I'm playing two sine waves and just heavily distorting them. And that actually, if you didn't know, that causes a nice wobble. Let me listen to this oscillator's um, solo. So this, sorry, and the second, you may hear a slight variation in pitch so it's it's very slightly different like two is it is like two cents so when it there start to it, it creates this wobble which becomes very apparent when you distort it so I don't know how audible it is because it's kind of behind the beats, but it is there. Yeah. So these minor variations are important, even because I mean it's kind of minimal here, but um, variation in, in and change in tone it, is important to the listener. I don't know if if, if anyone picks the like a small added wobbly change here compared to here here it probably couldn't even be heard because or here because there's so many elements but you know i like to do these things mostly for myself like small changes and hoping that somebody catches them i think it all com contributes to the song not being so static i get fed up with i'll, I'll just say it i don't want to well obviously i won't put any names out there but a lot of electronic music these days is i find kind of boring because it's very samey and the very obvious reason for that is like how easy it is to select a section and duplicate 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 and not pay a whole lot of attention to how loop loopy it becomes especially in some genres it's just like more a lot of dj tools it's just loop 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 minimal changes so i, I want to do this <laughs> it's almost like a reward for the listener like if you <laughs> If you made it this far without skipping, you're gonna hear this. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna hear this little wobbly bass addition, and this is it. And the song comes to a close. There's some delay stuff here. Yeah, even this is like a take for a variation. Like you're hearing it and hey, there's a little change. That had been done before I just committed this to audio. And 
this is something I always say to my students, uh, a big topic is the small variation. Um, as part of my paying job, I'm listening to songs and of my students and I give them critique for the songs and this is a ongoing topic, like especially less l less than experienced song makers, it's very loopy and I often give little tricks like add a little bit of change there and it just sounds good and refreshing. And then the song just stops. No warnings, it's there. I felt that it just kind of worked because it, the song is kind of kind of brutal in a way. It doesn't takes no prisoners, doesn't give any warnings relating to anything. So I felt the suitable stop is just like, yo, I'm just stopping because here you have like uh, the tempo change, and that's also like uh, no apologies. It just happens. There's not a whole lot of other processing to be pointed out here. A lot of this stuff is kind of basic. Um, did I do, I'm seeing I've used the virtual, the crystallizer here. Let me see it probably. Here. Okay, let's listen to this. This, I love this plugin for this. It's not very audible uh, under the other stuff, but I love this plugin. I've, I've been using this quite a bit. So basically, in a nutshell, it pitches up the sound, and then I'm just kind of fading the pitched signal up to so it's not very it's not so static. Once again, contributing to the small changes. So it will be like this, but then I fade in the gradually fading in the pitch signal. Sounds nice and dramatic, but it, it's a fairly simple song. There's not a whole lot of processing going on. There's not really not much to point out on the master. All the stuff that I'm doing is kind of subtle. So I won't be going into this now. There's really not these mostly just virtual mix rack here contributes okay it's only adding a little a very little bit of highs i love these plugins shadow hills is mostly like a safety net slow compressor and um i won't be going into those now i want to be talking about plugins processing and i do that on my patreon all the time i give tips and also talk that talk about those things privately to my patreon subscribers and my students but uh, that's it for the song one thing I promised to say was what makes for a good metalhead song is this dark and light theme, which I think happens in this song. And in many metalhead songs, I could pick so many, but I probably don't have to mention. You could pick lots of the classic. Um, and, and it often happens, for example, like I, I want to say that there's a formula, but there's, a, there's ingredients that you can use. In, in a lot of metalhead songs, I think there's like contrast between dark and light, and often you can have like a intro that is more light. I will be doing videos, more videos of my metalhead songs, but they will be private, paid videos on um, Patreon, but this will be public anyways, but I will be doing more of those. And one, I can think of a, another song, for example, where the intro is kind of light, but when it drops, it kind of just becomes dark. And I think this metalhead's vibe has often been about this very strong contrast about blending the light and dark in in a way it's in this song it's mostly the intro is kind of dark mostly but it kind of gets more light here when the fun when it gets more funky <laughs> Like it doesn't sound very hopeful here. It's it's just like a so 
so it's kind of dark here but <laughs> So it's more light here. I don't want to say that I've cracked the code, but obviously everyone has certain elements in their music that they like. And I, I've noticed this early on in Metalhead songs and obviously in a lot of other drum and bass. It's su such a powerful element, this whole dark and light contrast. And contrast in music in general is, is a powerful thing. Like uh, changes in songs like the sections that are relevant uh, in terms of each other, but then there's like a different changes, even like a tempo change, or often it's like you're, you're kind of mellow and then you get kind of rough for a while. Music plays or has, I mean, it, I, I wanted to say, <laughs> I wanted to say music plays with our emotions, but it has to do with our emotions. Like we react emotionally to music and that's why this contrast for example, the metal heads dark and light is so important. That's it for now for the song. But there's, I said, there's a little story I wanted to tell and, and how the song happened. Um, so let's do that. So this is not the original arrangement of the drum break here. I've, uh, like I said, I, I chopped it up. I played it with tall sampler that I showed you quickly in the beginning. But um, I was sent to this drum break via email by some person and because they knew that I've always been into nice break beats. So I, I literally, I just got the break by email and I was like, man, that sounds fantastic. That sounds insane. And I just, I knew I wanted to make a song out of it. And it's just kind of, sometimes you get really stoked about something like an element or whatever, and then you just quickly build something around it. And that's how it came that's how it happened but it's funny that somebody sends me a breakbeat because it doesn't happen very often it's only happened a few times along the years i can appreciate it though but like um if that never if that email had never come in or if it had been um categorized as, as spam this song would not be there and maybe i never would have made it to metalheads because this one story worth mentioning is this was the first song that um, was picked by, picked by Metalheads. And I swear, I was so close to not sending this song out because it's technically, tempo-wise, it's not drum and bass. And I remember, I like in my career, I've had ups and downs. Um, there's been moments when I've been like really discouraged. And, you know, I, I guess everybody who's been making music for a while, like I've been making music for around 29 years there's been moments when you get you go through the totally useless like is it worth it? Do you want to? Should I do it? Should I quit? Everybody's done it. <laughs> not, not everybody admits it, but they've been there. And when I sent this song out, I was really discouraged with my um, position or whatever in my career, like uh, in, in in broken beat music. And I sent this song out, and I remember when I was sending it, I was like, this is literally the last song that I'm going to be sending out for a while. And if this doesn't work, I don't know what, I'll take a break. <laughs> but it did get picked up and things went kind of fast from there. I just, I just got a really good vibe up, vibe about Goldie liking my stuff. And this song got picked up and then I just started working on other relevant material. And I just came up with the songs that are the other songs on my Black Label EP on Metalheads, but I guess it, funny or not, like the first song that was picked up was not even drum and bass, it's slower. But if there's any point there is don't give up and just keep doing your thing. And I mean, in usually in, in music, it's uh, in terms of musical career, the good things usually happen when you don't really expect them to happen. And it's when you really, really like want something, it doesn't always happen, or maybe it does, like I don't want to sound discouraging, but it, the, the rewards or something usually don't happen exactly when you want them. Like if you're really working on something and you're like, I need it, I'm going to need it right now, they usually happen at, the different, at a different time. So just don't give up, keep doing your thing and it'll work out. <laughs> I think that's it for now. 
um yeah I, i'm on patreon so if you want to check me out there and support my stuff please do link will be below and mixing and mastering music it that is what i do as my main thing as my living that pays for my uh pays for my living so if you need that a link will be below links to my metalhead stuff will be below links to everything um everything that matters will be below if you made it this far i thank you <laughs>